I add one last little piece that we found useful in the talks, and that is, what if how people listen or talk about peak oil, peak climate, peak economics is almost like going through the grieving process when somebody loses somebody, when somebody dies. And we found that it absolutely mirrors the audience and ourselves. And I go through these same processes. I'm going to show you where I'm at in this process. Some people are in denial. Some are angry. Some are bargaining. You move through depression. You finally accept your situation. We've lost the civilization we were born into. And then there's hope. And I saw a little bit of hope. So I'm watching Richard. I'm saying he, he wasn't always this hopeful in his earlier books, mind you. So here's my personal peak profile. I give it about a 5% chance we're going to have the Google guys save us. There's no technology elixir, the magic elixir. Just read uh, the books. But I give it 5% because you never know. And black swans have been swirling around this for the last three months. I don't underestimate anything at this point. So I've got to give it something. Techno stability that we can do this through a seamless conversion to green. If you hang around John Richter, he's my, been my best friend since age 13. He, he kind of hurts the idea that we're going to get to the renewables fast enough. There's no time, there's no money, and we talk about that in the workshops. Energy descent, I give it a 65. I think I'm finally buying into the idea that we are going to teach our children, I have a four-year-old, how to live on less, something like 10% less every year forever until we reach this stable spot that could be one-tenth. But I want you to know I wasn't always 65. I was actually higher. But last, what was it, two weeks ago, I listened to Dimitri and John Greer, and I went from a 15 collapse to a 25, and I think I'm already up to a 30, because this is getting so scary with the way, especially the web of debt, that this thing may start cycling so fast that we can't get ourselves even to get together as a community fast enough. So my number keeps adjusting, and you'll see, I think what Aaron's going to want us to do is see how, as you go through this conference, your probabilities change as you get more information. Now add to that, I'm an unenthusiastic brown techer. I actually believe we're going to have a lot of coal, nuclear, and it's going to be a brown solution. Even though I want green, I have a feeling that when I die, I will look out and we'll say we used a heck of a lot of coal, a heck of a lot of nuclear. We didn't pull quite together that miracle that Richard talks about. So I've kind of got that bias. With a little bit of, at my home level, I'm a lifeboatist. I'm kind of trying to be a survivalist. And I'm certainly now finding that I've moved from anger, bargaining, to depression. I am not in acceptance, and I am not in hope yet. It's looking really bad. So when we do these great talks, we're yelled at. Where's your happiness, your hope? I said, it's, it's there. It's just I'm so biased. It's hard to come out because I'm, in, I'm going through my, my grieving for what looks like the fall of our economic system even before peak oil and peak climate. So what about this? What if, you know how kids run around and they put clothes on that represents who they are? Well, here's one. Everybody, I guess you wear that shirt when you're a radical, you're a rebel. So I thought, OK, what if we could show people, at least when we're talking, and certainly when I look over at John there, I could say, I wonder how he's listening to me. What does he think the futures are going to look like? What are his probabilities? So I thought, why don't we do our own shirt? So there it is. Now I know what to say at what I don't call the most, I think the transition calls it the most inspiring movement the world has ever seen. And I'm too much in the depression and obviously in the collapse camp. So I call it the most inspiring AA meeting the world has ever seen. Hi, my name is Tim Hutz, but I'm a 5%, 5%, 65 with a good shot that collapse is going to happen. Brown tech fearing, and I've got the peak oil blues. So what I want you to do is just think, where are you at? as you listen to Richard talk, because some people are so hopeful, they're not hearing the doom that permeates his message as well. The lack of, if we don't do something, how bad it could get. Or some people are so doom, they forget that there is hope. We literally could turn it on a dime. So look at where you're at, and also judge. You know, what was, I wonder what Richard's profile is. So let's look, uh, let's look at a couple, let's take a guess. Here's Al Gore. So my guess, Al Gore, is a 109000 if we could just get him to wear the number. He believes we're going to be able to get to these green wind solar fast enough 
that we might not even be, have to lower our standard of living as much and we can stay at this kind of current level, maybe slightly under, maybe go back to the 50s level of industrialization, but nothing like the energy descent that we're hearing from these smaller conferences. So the Al Gore, I would say definitely green and I put him at the bargaining. I think he's bargaining. I think he hasn't come to grip with the fact that this is so dire that he thinks he can negotiate it out and power slide it out and do all the things. You can't, it may not be true. It just may be his bias. Okay, how about Dimitri or Matt Savinar or Greer? Okay, no doubt, because they moved me up from a 15 to a 25 and I think I'm going to be a 35 and collapse. All you got to do is read their books, and R Richard, I'm telling you, these guys, are, they're, they're, Dimitri's the guy that studied Russia and watched the collapse there, and is going to show why when we collapse, we won't do it as well as they did because of how we're constructed. Almost counter arguments to, you know, what made us individual, why it worked in Cuba and Russia and why it might not work here. So I give him a, he's definitely a collapse or lifeboater, but I think he may still be angry, he might be depressed, or because these guys are so smart when I talk to them, they actually may be so enlightened, they've accepted the truth. Collapse is here, it will happen, and it's Richard and I and the rest of us that still think energy descent is possible that are in denial. We don't know. Last one, just guess this one. Economists and politicians. 80, 20, 0, 0. No doubt, you listen to them, there's something gonna, something's gonna take care of it, the free market system, supply and demand, there's always some miracle, and they agree it could be green, it could be some breakthrough, maybe we can roll it out. They're definitely brown tech and they're definitely in denial. So the thing is, it's not which are the right probabilities, but it's which ones help you better understand yourself or better understand others. I call it scenario thinking, which is a strategic way to start thinking. 250 years in advance, we're thinking about how this thing's gonna roll out in Michigan, because we're gonna be caught in within the civilization's web of how it rolls out. It's like managing a diversified portfolio of probable outcomes. So just the way we manage our portfolio of non-correlated assets, which unfortunately all seem to correlate, September and October. You do the same thing when you start looking at what you're gonna do in Michigan because we're likely gonna have a mix of all the scenarios. So the idea that we're gonna do one thing, it's community or nothing, may not be true. It may be a little mixture of brown tech, top government constriction, and there's gonna be a bunch of little more uh, governmental controls in our lives than we want. But at the same time, at our state level, we might do things in different states differently. And certainly our communities can structure it without in case the national governments or the state governments really screw it up in a totally different way. And if everybody screws it up, you always have your own personal strategy in your home, which John and I have been doing ever since we did Y2K, and I'm telling you, none of that seems to be working. So with that, pull out your, your, your thing, Aaron. Do you want him to do it It's now? Okay, pull out your thing. And he did it kind of like a, uh, a quadrant, so you can kind of just just for, you don't have to show anybody this, by the way. I wrote it on my badge, so you'll see, when you see me, I'm a 556525. So you immediately know, this guy has a collapse part to him. I talked to, Rep where's Representative Law? Representative Law, do you remember, you, you kind of wondered why I was talking to you, I kept grilling, I'm saying, boy, this woman is amazingly passionate and enthusiastic, and I finally figured out, she had already moved through a year of depression and has gotten so inspired that she got to hope and uh, she doesn't have a lot in the collapse. Her hope is so overwhelming that, you know, it's like, okay, that's a very, I'm having a different conversation understanding her hope because I wasn't sure. I said, is she, del doesn't she understand? This is dire. How can she be so hopeful? So it began to help me even have dialogues that we have in the room. So write down your things. We won't, you know, go through them now. And then uh, throughout the conference, notice how they change. And particularly after you listen to John Richter talking his peak oil thing, your collapse scenario will go up. Thank you very much. <laughs>